May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Guke Audio podcast. I'm DC, Pumbaa of Guke Audio and Guke Archives. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship, and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. So uh, here is the entire last lecture that Shunyu Suzuki spoke. First I read it, then you will hear him saying it. One comment. Um, in uh, doing this work, uh, you know, I read these lectures in clips. Uh, I do this one in three clips. And was it this one, like the second one? I put the, the the audio for Suzuki speaking it before the introduction to it. I mean, there's this the introduction to me reading, right? And then sometimes I comment a little and then put uh, the, his audio on. Anyway, you know, it said... <laughs> Now you're going, after he spoke, it said, now you're going to hear him speak. So I just fixed that one. Uh, and uh, yeah, too bad. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. I keep, you know, I make all these mistakes and I say, all right, that's it. I won't do that again. <laughs> yeah, right. Hmm. So here we go. The lecture is entitled, Wherever You Are, We Have Zen Way of Practice. Saturday, August 21st, 1971. Excuse me, I feel rather stiff. Maybe I worked too hard. Since we have Tassahara in the city Zendo, our practice is rather concentrated on city practice or Tassahara practice. But the most important point is to know what is Zen practice, which is not only city practice, which is not only Tassahara practice and city Zendo practice. Wherever you are, we have the Zen way of practice. No matter where you are, you must have a proper understanding of our practice. In the Shobo Genzo, Genjo Koan, Dogen Zinji says, referring to this point, when all things are Buddhism, there are birth and death. There are defilement, practice, birth and death, Buddhas and sentient beings. When all things have no self, there is no delusion, no Buddha, no sentient beings, no birth, no death. Buddhism originally is beyond all positivity or negativity. So there are birth and death, defilement and enlightenment and sentient beings and Buddha. There, you know, this is our fundamental practice. It is better now, I think, for us to follow the more original way of Zen practice, which is to go beyond Tassahara practice or city Zendo practice our practice in city life. Wherever you are, this is the fundamental way of practice for us, or else we will be too much uh, involved in city practice or monastic practice, and we will lose the point of practice, I am afraid. When all things are Buddhism, there are defilement, practice, birth and death, Buddhas and sentient beings. The point is, all things are Buddhism. Whatever you do, that is Buddhism. But there is some danger in your understanding of these kind of words, this kind of statement. 
Whatever you do, that is Buddhism. You know, whatever you do in Tassajara, in the city Zindo, or in city life, that is Buddhism. It sounds like uh, this. Well, whatever we do, it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, that is the practice of Buddhism. Well, if it's so, uh, it's not necessary for you to study Buddhism. Whatever you do, that is Buddhism. But actually, what Dogen Zinji meant is not like that. Uh, so uh, when you understand this statement, whatever you do, uh, that is Buddhism, there may be two ways of understanding it. One is whatever you do, if you understand, if you take this statement literally from your non-Buddhist, non-Buddhistic understanding, that that is one, you know. There is another is the real Buddhist understanding of this statement, like in the Lotus Sutra, we say, shoho jiso. Shoho means things we see. Jiso is truth, true way it exists, the true way they exist, the real way things exist. So everything exists in the way they exist. So usually when we understand whatever you do, that is Buddhism, means even though you do not behave, <laughs> even though you do not live in the way you should live. It is Buddhism, you know. There's a big difference. The way things exist, here is maybe the problem of to be and should be. To be and should be. You know, people uh, recently uh, don't like the words should be. Uh, and you like to be. Maybe uh, uh, should be looks like some rules. And to be is, you know, freedom. Whatever you do, that is good. That is to be. But it will be the opposite. Should be is to be. And should be is to be. <laughs> you know, when you behave according to the circumstances appropriately, then that is should be. And that is to be. To be and should be are the same. But when you are selfish, you know the idea arises and rejects should be, rejects the way you exist, then that is not the way to be. You are involved in delusion, the delusion of self. And in its strict sense, you cannot survive in that way. You think you can, but actually you cannot. Or you want to be, you want to survive in that way, but actually it is not possible. If you want to go to Los Angeles, you should take Freeway 101. You cannot go that way uh, if you go the opposite way. Many people are going that way. They take so 101. So I will go the opposite way. And uh, eventually you will uh, go to, you will reach Los Angeles. Uh, uh, but that is... Uh, the kind of way you choose. So uh, to think it is about a f kind of freedom is good, but actually that is not possible. So knowing that that is not possible, to think about it is another matter, you know. But if you sit seriously, try to do whatever you want to do, that is delusion. Uh, it means that you are completely involved in delusion. It is not actual. It is not possible to survive in that way. So, should be and to be are not different. So, real freedom is in should be. In its true sense, it's to be. That should be is the way for beginners and that to be, which is one with should be, is the advanced student. So the first stage should be, should be, <laughs> should be. An endless, you know, continuous practice of should be. <laughs> you have no, you know, chance to get out of should be. <laughs> that is okay, you know. Pretty soon, should be will be to be. Should be or to be, you don't care. Should be is okay, to be is okay for you. That is the goal of practice, you know. So, Dogen Zenji says, Buddhism originally is beyond all positivity and negativity. 
Buddhism originally is beyond all to be or should be. The real way is not only to be, but also should be. Or not only should be, but also to be. That is the real way. That is the stage you will acquire after following the teaching. Ah, this is rather discouraging. <laughs> Maybe if I say so from the beginning, you will not, uh, uh, you know, say, oh, I wish I hadn't started practicing Buddhism. It's too difficult. You may say so, but Buddhism isn't any special teaching. Actually, Buddhism is our human way. Here we are. Here we have many things to think about. First of all, we should know that this world for human beings, not the one for birds or cats, but for human beings, this world is the world of suffering. Originally, you know, well, not originally, but for human beings, as long as we are, you know, human nature, which is very selfish, which cares for something which you can't acquire or you cannot expect, that is human nature. We care for something which we cannot reach or because you can't reach it, you want it. Because, you know, we do not stay forever young. We want to be young always. Something which we cannot expect is something we like. That is our human nature. So human life is, you know, at the same time, a life of suffering. That is very true. We should know many things about our human being. When you know about human nature deep enough, then you will start to practice Buddhism. It's like an operation. When the pain is strong enough to accept the operation, you'll go to the doctor. But it is almost impossible, you know, to have an operation when you have no pain because you have a great pain because you know human nature well enough, you start Buddhism uh, like you go to the doctor to have an operation. This is the nature of Buddhism. That is why you practice Zazen. At first, when you sit, many things will come up, you know, many ideas, many wrong ideas, and many things you did before. We don't do so many good things in comparison to bad things, most of the things we do are bad, <laughs> are things you feel regretful about. When you do something, you feel very good, but after you did it, how do you feel? Oh, I thought it was very good, but it was not so good. That is something you know, that feeling you have. And that kind of feeling comes up, you know, constantly when your mind is very calm. Like a bubble, you know, it comes up from the bottom of the water. When the water's rough, not smooth enough, then no bubbles come out. Even though it comes out, you don't notice it. But as soon as your mind becomes calm, you may realize how many bubbles you have at the bottom of your heart. The real practice, you know, starts from that kind of practice. You may say, Zen practice should be calm, to have calmness of your mind is real practice. I have been practicing Zazen for so many years, two years, three years, or more than that. Still, I don't have calmness <laughs> of my mind at all. What shall I do? That will be your question. In Zazen practice, we say, if something arises in your mind, let it arise, let it come. They won't stay so long, so let it go away. In Zazen, that works pretty well. If you let it come, and if you do not entertain it, it will go away. But in actual life, it is not so easy, you know. You may suffer. Then what will you do? When you suffer, what will you do? The suffering is very strong. What will you do? Here's something you should think about. The one point is, 
your practice is in the first stage and you have the next stage and the third stage. In the next stage, it's like when you have good zazen practice, nothing arises in your mind. Your mind will be, even for a while, in complete calmness where there's no image or feeling. Your mind is complete calmness. That's the next stage you will have in your zazen practice. And the third stage will be the stage you come back to the stage. Something like the first stage where there are many problems, where there are many weeds, and where there are many flowers. Uh, but the way you see the flowers, the way you weed the weed is different. But nearly the same stage looks like the same stage, but big difference. So you don't have to solve that problem. The point is you should continue that practice of difficulty. That is the point. So you should know uh, that is only the first stage of your practice. Uh, so you can't solve the problem only at the first stage. If you struggle at the first stage, you will lose your practice. That's why we say, you know, great patience is the best of virtues. To continue is the most important practice. Without struggling with it, just continue it. Then you will uh, have a chance to have the second stage or the third stage. Someone who fell on the earth, maybe by stumbling on a stone or something, f will stand up by the earth, by the same earth. Because of the earth, you stumble. You fell, you know. The earth is a problem. Because of the problem, you hurt. You know, you hit against the earth. But because of the earth, you can support yourself again and you can stand up. So you've complained because you think that uh, because of the earth you fell. But without the earth, you will not fall. And at the same time, Without the earth, you cannot stand up. So because you have a problem, you know, you, you feel as if because of the problem, you know, you fell. Fell or stand up, you know. A great help which was given to you by the earth. So the problem itself is your mother, you know. Because of the mother of earth, you can continue your practice you are practicing, you know. So the zendo of the earth, the great earth, which is the problem. And the problems are actually your zendo. This is very true. So what is delusion? What is enlightenment? When you are deluded of truth, that is delusion. When you are deluded of earth, that is delusion. When you are enlightened of the earth, that is enlightenment. When you stand up by the earth, that is enlightenment. When you fail, you know, because of the earth, you feel in that way, that is delusion. So you have a chance to attain a great enlightenment when you have a problem. Usually you talk about your surroundings, you talk about Tassara practice and city practice. That is, I think, very good. <laughs> But uh, that is not the point of practice. The point of practice is the problems you have here are the city or Tassahara, and they're, they're the earth. So if Tassahara is monastery, the city Zindo is a monastery, and the city is also a monastery in its wide sense. Our way is not to get rid of all the stones from the earth which could be stumbling stones for you. It's good to have many stones on the earth which could uh, be stumbling stones. It's good. And when you stand up, if you have a high, big stone, 
it, it may be easier to stand up, but more people will hit against it. But it is very good for your practice to have big stones everywhere. This is, for instance, a big stone, if you understand it. That is, you, you know, enlightenment. If you don't understand it, it is a big slap, a painful slap. This is a big stone. So if there's not much stone for you to help your practice, we have to bring many stones from Tassajara to the city Zendo. You are not so interested in this kind of stuff, you know. So if you understand our life, our problem in this way, then you will have, you will get through the first stage. I don't think I have time to explain the next stage, but you may feel, you know, if you understood our problems of our life in this way, then that is, you know, the end of the whole picture. But it is just a first series of the movie. Why it is so is, you know, something we should think about. In the first stage, very interesting first stage, you may want to stay a little bit longer. But again, that is too selfish, you know. Buddhism is very strict, very strict. You may enjoy the first stage very much. Actually, in the city, in the Zendo, you know, when you come to the Zendo, you have, you know, good Zen practice. And when you go to the city, you will enjoy city life. Leisurely mind, you know, you have some space or some room to accept the difficulties of city life because of the wisdom of understanding of our human nature, you know, we can, well, we have time or we have room for accepting the problems. We are ready to accept the problems. Like you said, Zazen, uh, in Zazen, many, many things come. Okay, I have enough room here or here or here for you to come. Please come. But, you know, it's interesting to see how they go away. Oh, nothing to see, nothing to eat, so they may go out. It is very interesting. But, you know, Zen is not something to play with, to play a game with. We shouldn't play a game with it. If you practice Zazen because you enjoy your practice, that is not Buddhist practice. It is very strict. Buddha's mercy is so deep, so clear, and so wide when we selfish human beings always want something good to eat, something good to hear, something good to see. So if someone gives you something to hear or something to eat, most humans will stay. Knowing this fact, Buddha became more and more strict with us. Yeah, it's something, you know, which uh, you must think about. And when you study or when you want to learn religion, you must learn something more than this. Just to solve our everyday problem is not the purpose of studying Buddhism. Yesterday I saw Soen Nakagawa Roshi, and I thought he was going back to Japan, but he was going to, uh, oh, what's the name of that place um, um, where Christ was born? Bethlehem. Oh, yeah. He was going to that place. Why is he going there? I think that is Buddha mind, you know, something more than this, something more than to enjoy his enlightenment. He is going somewhere else again. He looks like he's very much interested in helping people. Maybe so, but that's not, you know, helping people. Without helping people, uh, he may not feel so good. So that is why he is going. But his going is not just to satisfy his personal feeling. You know, at the end of the session, we bowed maybe more than 30 times, calling many Buddhas' names. Among the Buddhas, you know, they called out special names, Sunshine Buddha, Moonlight Buddha, Dead Sea Buddha. I don't know, because he has his disciple who started a Zendo at the Dead Sea. That's why he bowed. He called the name of Dead Sea Buddha and Good Practice Buddha. Many Buddhas appeared, and we bowed and bowed and bowed. That is something, you know, which is beyond our understanding. And he also, when he bowed to all those Buddhas, the Buddhas he bowed to, all oh, that's something beyond his own understanding. And again and again and again, he did it. 
And he gave us, you know, matcha. He made himself, you know, and gave us matcha. What he was doing, I don't know, and he doesn't know, maybe. Anyway, he did it, and he offered, and he looks very happy, and that happiness is very different from the happiness we usual people have. Our practice should go, you know, to that level where there is no human problem or no Buddha problem, where there is nothing. And to have tea and to have cake and to make a trip from one place to another, uh, that was his, you know, practice. And he has no idea of helping people. What he is doing is helping, but he himself has no idea of helping people. So to solve our human problem doesn't cover all our practice, Buddhist practice. Hmm. We don't know how long it takes for us to make, you know, the Buddha trip. We have many trips, work trips, various trips, space trips, various trips we must have. The Buddha trip is a very, you know, very long trip. That is Buddhism. Thank you very much. Excuse me. <laughs> mm, I feel rather stiff. Maybe I worked too hard. Uh, since we have uh, Tassahara, and the city zendo. Mm, our practice is rather concentrated on city practice or Tassahara practice. But uh, uh, the most uh, important point is to know uh, what is Zen practice, uh, which is uh, not only city practice, but also um, Tassahara practice, and city Zendo practice. Wherever you are, uh, we have a Zen way of practice. No matter where you are, uh, we must have proper understanding of uh, practice. Mm. In Chobo Genzo, uh, Genjo Koan, Dogen Zenji says, referring to this point, when all things are uh, Buddhism, uh, there uh, birth and death, mm. there uh, defilement, practice, birth and death, Buddhas and sentient beings. When all things have no self, there is no delusion, no Buddha, no sentient beings, no birth, no death. Buddhism originally is beyond or positivity or negativity. So there are birth and death, defilement and enlightenment and sentient beings and Buddha. This is a fundamental practice. It is better uh, now, I think, for us and to follow more original uh, way of Zen practice, which is go beyond Tassahara practice or city Zendo practice or practice in city life. Wherever you are, and this is the fundamental way of practice for us. Mm, or else we will be too much you know, involved in uh, city practice or uh, monastic practice. And we will lose the point of practice 
I'm afraid. When all things are Buddhism, there are defilement practice, birth and death, Buddhas and sentient beings. The point is they are, they are. All things are Buddhism. Whatever you do, that is Buddhism. Mm. Here's some danger uh, in your understanding of this uh, kind of words, uh, statement. Whatever you do, that is Buddhism. You know, whatever you do in the Sahara or in city center or in uh, city life, that is Buddhism. It looks like, it sounds like uh, this. Whatever you do, it doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> that is a practice of Buddhism. Mm. If it is so, uh, it is not necessary for you to study Buddhism. If whatever you do, that is Buddhism. But actually, uh, what Dongyuan Zenji meant is not uh, like that. There is maybe, when you understand uh, this statement, whatever you do, that is you know, Buddhism. There may be two ways of understanding it. One is <laughs> take uh, this statement literally from your non-Buddhistic understanding. Mm, that is one, you know. So another is real uh, uh, Buddhist understanding of this statement. Like, uh, you know, in Lotus Sutra, uh, we say, shoho, uh, jisso. Shoho means uh, things we see. Jisso is uh, truth, true uh, way they exist, real way things exist. So everything exists. Uh, in the way they exist. So usually, when we understand uh, whatever you do, that is Buddhism means, uh, even though you do not behave, <laughs> you, even though you do not, uh, you know, uh, live the way you should live, it is Buddhism. You know, there's a big difference. <laughs> Where things exist. Uh, here it's uh, maybe the problem of to be and uh, should be. To be and should be. And recently, uh, people do not like the word should be. <laughs> should be. And you like to be, maybe. The should be is, looks like some rules. And to be is, uh, you know, uh, freedom. Whatever you do, uh, that is good, that is um, to be. But uh, uh, it will be the uh, opposite. Should be is to be. <laughs> should be is to be. You know, uh, when you uh, behave uh, according to the circumstances appropriately, then that is should be and that is to be. To be and should be is same. But when your selfish, you know, uh, idea arises and reject should be, reject the way you exist, then uh, 
that is not way uh, to be. You are involved in delusion, delusion of self. And in its strict sense, you cannot survive in that way. You think you can, but actually you cannot. Or you want to survive in that way, but actually it is not possible. If you want to go to Los Angeles, you should take uh, freeway 101. <laughs> you cannot go that way, even though uh, you want to go opposite way. Many people are going that way, take uh, 101. So I will uh, go to the opposite way. Eventually, you will go to reach to Los Angeles. <laughs> but, <laughs> and that is a kind of uh, the way you choose. So uh, to think about uh, a kind of freedom uh, is good. But uh, actually, that is not possible. So knowing that that is not possible to think about it is another matter. But if you seriously try to do uh, whatever you want to do, uh, that is delusion. It means that you are completely involved in delusion. It is not actual. It is not possible to uh, survive in that way. So should be and to be is not different. So real freedom is in uh, should be. And it needs true sense uh, to be. That should be is a way for beginners. And uh, that to be, which is one, which should be it's the advanced student. So, a first stage should, <laughs> should be, should be. <laughs> and should be, should be, should be. <laughs> and endless, you know, continuous practice of should be. <laughs> you have no, uh, you know, uh, chance to get out of should be. <laughs> and that is okay, you know. Pretty soon, should be will be to be. <laughs> should be or to be, you don't care. Should be is okay. To be is okay for you. That is the goal of practice, you know. So, uh, Dogen Zenji says, Buddhism originally is beyond all positivity and negativity. Buddhism originally is beyond all uh, to be and or should be. You know. Real way is not only uh, to be, but also should be. Or well, not only should be, but also to be. That is the real way. That is the stage you will acquire after uh, following uh, teaching. <sighs> this is rather, you know, discouraging. <laughs> Uh, maybe uh, if I say so from the beginning, you know, you may say, oh, uh, I wish I didn't start uh, practice Buddhism. <laughs> it is too difficult. <laughs> you may say, but Buddhism is not any special teaching. Actually, Buddhism is a human way. We have many things to think about. 
First of all, uh, we should know that this world for a human being, not for birds or cats, but for a human being. Uh, this world is a world of suffering. <laughs> originally, no. not originally, but for a human being. As long as we are you know, human nature, which is very selfish, which care for something which you know you uh, cannot acquire or you cannot expect, that is human nature. You know we care for something which we cannot teach. You know. Or because you cannot reach, you, you want it. Because, you know, uh, we do not stay young forever. Uh, we want to be, you know, uh, young always. <laughs> something which we cannot expect is something we like. That is uh, our human nature. So, uh, human life is at the uh, you know, same time a life of suffering. That is very true. We should know many things about our human being. Now, when you know about human nature, uh, deep enough, then uh, you will start you know, uh, Buddhism. You will start to practice Buddhism. It is like operation. You know. uh, when the pain is you know, strong enough to accept the operation, you will go to the doctor. <laughs> but it is almost impossible to have operation when you have no pain. Because you have a great pain. Because you know human nature well enough, you start Buddhism. Like you go to the doctor to have operation. This is um, nature of um, Buddhism. That is why you practice Dazen. At first, when you sit, many things will come up, you know, many ideas, many wrong ideas, and many things you did before. We don't do so much good things in comparison to bad things. <laughs> Most of the things we do is bad. <laughs> or uh, things you uh, feel regretful. When you do, you feel very good. But after you did it, how do you feel? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought it was very good, but it was not so good. <laughs> that is something, you know, feeling you have. And that kind of feeling come up, you know, constantly when your mind is very calm. Like a bubble, you know, comes up, comes up from the bottom of the water. When the water is, uh, you know, rough, not smooth enough, then no bubbles comes out. Even though it comes out, you don't notice it. As soon as your mind becomes calm, you may realize how much bubbles you have 
in your uh, bottom of your heart. The real practice, you know, start from that kind of um, practice. And you may say, uh, then practice should be calm. To have calmness of your mind is real practice. I have been practicing that for so many years, two years, three years, or more than that. Still, I don't have calmness of mind at all. What shall I do? That will be uh, your question. In Zazen practice, we say, if something, you know, arise in your mind, let it arise, let it come. Then it will not stay so long, so let it go away. In Zazen, yeah, that works pretty well. If you let it come, and if you do not entertain them, they will go away. But uh, in actual life, it is not so easy, you know. You may suffer. Ah, then what will you do? When you suffer, what do you do? The suffering is very strong. What will you do? Here yeah, it's, you know, something you should think about. The one point is, you know, your practice is in the first, you know, stage. And you have next stage and the third stage. In the next stage, you will, like when you have good dozen practice, nothing arises in your mind. Your mind will be, even for a while, uh, in complete calmness, where there is no uh, image or no feeling. Your mind is complete calmness. That is the next stage you will have in your dozen practice. And the third stage will be the stage you come back to the stage, something like the first stage, where there is many problems, where there is many weeds, and where there is many flowers. But where you see, see the flowers, the way you uh, weed the weed is different, but nearly the same stage looks like same stage, but big difference. So you don't have to solve that problem. The point is, you should continue that practice of difficulty. That is the point. So you should know that it's, you know, only the first stage of your practice. You cannot solve the problem only at the first stage. If you struggle at the first stage, you will lose your practice. That is why we say, you know, great patient is the best of virtues. To continue it is most important practice. Without struggling with it, just continue it, then you will have chance 
to have the second stage or the third stage. Someone who fell on the earth, maybe by stumbling stone or something, you know, fell on the earth, will stand up by the same earth. Because of the earth, you fell, you know. Earth is a problem. Because of the problem, you hurt, you know. You hit against the earth. But because of the earth, you can support yourself again and you can stand up. So, you have complained because you think because of the earth you fell. <laughs> but without us, you will not fail. And at the same time, you cannot stand up. So because you have problem, you know, you feel as if because of the problem, you know, you fail. Or fail or stand up is, you know, a help, you know, great help, which was given to you by art. So problem itself is your mother. Because of the mother of us, you can continue your practice. You are practicing, you know. So uh, zendo of the us, great us, which is the problems. Problems are actually your zendo. That is very true. So, uh, what is delusion? What is enlightenment? When you, you know, uh, deluded of truth, that is delusion. When you are deluded of us, that is delusion. When you enlightened of the us, that is enlightenment. When you stand up by the us, that is enlightenment. When you fail you know, because of the us, you feel in that way, that is delusion. So you have chance to attain a great enlightenment when you have problem. Usually you talk about your surrounding. You talk about the Sahara practice and city practice. That is, I think, very good. <laughs> but that is not the point of practice. The point of practice is the problem you have here, or a city, or the Sahara, is the earth. So if the Sahara is monastery, city Zendo is monastery, and city is also monastery, in its wide sense. Our way is not to get rid of all the stones from the earth, which could be a stumbling <laughs> stone for you. It is good to have many uh, stones on the earth, which could be a you know, stumbling stone. It is good. And when you stand up, if you have a high a big stone, it may be easier to stand up. But more people will, be <laughs> will hit against it. But it is very good uh, uh, for your practice to have big stones everywhere. This is, for instance, a big stone. If you understand it, that is, you know, 
uh, enlightenment. If you don't understand it, it is big slap, painful slap. This is a big stone. So if there is not much stone for you to help your practice, uh, we have to uh, bring many stones from Tassahara to citizen. <laughs> You are not uh, so interested in this kind of stuff, you know. So, if you understand our life, our problem in this way, then ah, you will get through the first stage. Mm. I don't think I have time to explain the next stage, but uh, you may feel, you know, if you understand our, our problems of our life in this way, then that is, you know, end of the uh, whole picture, you know. But it is just the first series of the movie. <laughs> Why it is so? It's, you know, mm. something we should think about. In the first stage, very interesting stage, so you may want to stay the first stage <laughs> a little bit longer. <laughs> That is, but uh, again, that is too selfish. Mm. <laughs> Buddhism is very strict, you know, very strict. You may enjoy the first stage very much, actually, in the city, in Zendo, you know, when you come to Zendo, you have, you know, Ah, good Zen practice. When you go to the city, you will enjoy city life with a kind of uh, leisurely mind. You, know. you have you know, some space or some room to accept the difficulty, difficulties of the city life because of the uh, wisdom of understanding of our human nature. We have time, or we have room for accepting the problems. We are ready to accept problems. Like you sit Zazen, you know, in Zazen, many, many things come, okay. <laughs> I have enough room here, or here, or here, for you to come. Please come. <laughs> but it is interesting to see how they go away. <laughs> oh, nothing to see. <laughs> nothing to eat. So they may go out. <laughs> it's very interesting. But you know, Zen is not something to pray, you know, to pray with, to play game with. We shouldn't play game with it. If you practice Zen because you enjoy your practice, that is not Buddha's practice. He's very strict. Buddha's mercy is so deep, so clear, and so wide. When we selfish human being always want something good to eat, something good to hear, something good to see. So if 
someone give you something to hear or something to eat, most human beings will stay. Knowing this fact, Buddha become more and more strict with us. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something, you know, which you must think about. And when you, you know, study or when you want to learn religion, you must learn something more than this, just to solve our everyday problem. It is not purpose of studying Buddhism. At this point, the tape was turned over and these words were missed. Yesterday, I saw Soen Nakagawa Roshi. I thought he's going back to Japan, but uh, he was going to, um, but uh, the place, uh, Elsheim, how you pronounce, where Christ was born. Hmm? Yeah, he was going to that place. Why is he going to there? I think that is Buddha mind, you know. Something more than this, something more than to enjoy uh, his enlightenment. He's going somewhere else again. He looks like very much interested in uh, helping people. Maybe so, but that is not, you know. Without helping people, he may not feel so good. So that is why he's going. But uh, uh, his going is not just to satisfy his personal feeling. You know, at the end of the session, uh, <laughs> we bow, <laughs> maybe more than 30 times, calling uh, many Buddha's name. The, among the Buddhas, um, you know, they call some special names. Sunshine Buddha, or Moonlight Buddha, or Dead Sea Buddha. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Because he had his disciple who started Zendo at Dead Sea. That is why he called the name of Dead Sea Buddha. And good practice Buddha. Many Buddhas appeared. And bowed and bowed and bowed. <laughs> that is something, you know, uh, which is beyond our understanding. And he also bowed, when he bowed to all those Buddha. And the Buddha he bowed to is something beyond his own understanding. Again and again he did it. And he gave us Uh, He made himself and gave us matcha. What he was doing, I don't know, and he doesn't know, maybe. (laughs) Anyway, he did it, and he offered. And he looks very happy. But that happiness is very different from the happiness we uh, usual people have. The practice should go, you know, that level. 
where there is no human problem or no Buddha problem, where there is nothing, and to have tea and to have uh, cake and to make a trip from one place to the other. That was his, you know, practice. And he has no idea of helping people. What he's doing, he's helping, but he himself has no idea of helping people. So, to solve a human problem doesn't cover all our practice, Buddhist practice. Hmm. Uh, we don't know how long it takes for us to make, you know, a Buddha trip. <laughs> we have many trips, work trips, you know, various trips, space trip, <laughs> various trip. We must have a Buddha trip is very, you know, very long trip. That is Buddhism. Thank you very much. This has been a QQ Audio Podcast. I'm D.C. Puba of QQ Audio and QQ Archives, coming to you from Sleepy Sonora with Dog and Bandita, Feline Cuchita, and dear, lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening.